can. Um, welcome to Dr. Robert Griffin, currently serves as the founding dean of the College of Emergency Preparedness, Homeland Security, and Cybersecurity, CEHS. He came to CEHS after a long career in Homeland Security at the federal and local levels of government. In the federal government, Dr. Griffin served as the Undersecretary Acting for Science and Technology at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, the Deputy Undersecretary for Science and Technology, and the Director of Science and Technology Di Di Directorate's First Responders Group. Dr. Griffin was recognized for his exceptional management and leadership skills in 2016 when President Obama awarded him the Presidential Rank Award Distinguished, the nation's highest award for career members of the Senior Executive Service. Welcome, Dean Griffin. We look forward to hearing from you today. Thank you so much, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, I have some slides because it's, uh, what kind of former Fed would I be if I didn't have PowerPoint? Um, so I'm Bob Griffin. I'm the Dean of, of CEHC. I'm not going to say the name of the college again because it would take the entire hour. Um, this is a great opportunity. I, I, I spoke with you, I, I think it was back in 2017, uh, maybe 2018. So this is a great opportunity to update some of you that, that were in those, uh, in those sessions. And for those of you that haven't heard about the college, it's a great opportunity to, to, uh, to, to hear what's going on with, with the school. Um, so if you only listen to the first five minutes, let me give you the bottom line up front. Um, CHC continues to be a growth, uh, growth college on campus. We've actually become a destination college. And by a destination, I mean that, that we have students that are specifically applying to UAlbany to come to CEHC. Our students, our faculty, our college uh, continue to make a huge difference addressing some of the, the some of society's greatest challenges. And, and I'll talk a little bit about what that looks like uh, in, in some of the some of the future slides. Um, and, and we are building uh, what is becoming a signature strength for U Albany and frankly for the SUNY system too. And, and I think that's really important because we're we're really actually expanding beyond U Albany and and, uh, and have some really wonderful partnerships with with both public and private institutions. Uh, and we are becoming a recognized national leader. All things that that I had uh, I had talked about in 2017. If I could change the name of the school, I probably wouldn't call it CEHC. I probably wouldn't call it the College of Full Job Security, but it really is. And if you think about the areas that, that we're, we're turning out amazing students in, cybersecurity, emergency preparedness, uh, data sciences, uh, applied technologies, uh, social media interaction, anything that, that's on the cutting edge of, of where society is going, we're, we're touching. Just a couple of uh, uh, sort of quick overviews of college, uh, give you a sense of the timeline. Um, in 2015, Governor Cuomo announced that he wanted to have a college that was dedicated to, to the, training the next generation of emergency preparedness and homeland and cybersecurity uh, professionals. Uh, it was interesting. There was a, a huge competition, and it was decided that the college should go to U Albany, and th that still sticks in some folks' craws that wear orange in the western part of the state. Uh, but it was, I think it was great that we were located here uh, at, at a public university, and I think it's great that we're located in, in the capital. Um, quickly, we were able to get a minor approved, which and getting programs approved through um, the university, SUNY, and, and state education um, usually takes an act of God, so it, it moved incredibly fast. Uh, 2016, we had our first major approved, and then 2017, uh, we had our first cohort. Um, 2018, we were able to bring the information sciences over, and that's been an incredibly productive uh, and, and, and wonderful merger with the, the traditional emergency management and homeland folks. What you saw from 2019, 2020 is that we, we really worked to, to increase the access to, to the university and to the programs, doing things like putting in what we call 4-1 pathways, which allow our undergraduates to move into graduate school. Um, so they come out in five years with both a, a bachelor's and a master's degree. Um, we, we really worked to, to make sure that we had created a, a mixed modalities. So when we were talking about, on, we were talking about online and bringing 100% of our, our classes, both online and in person, well before COVID, which really helped us ride the COVID wave pretty easily. Um, well, as easily as you can. I, I don't want to, I don't want to discount how, how tough it is on, on everybody. 2020, we were bringing on, on new degrees that I'm going to talk about, some really, 
really impressive funded research in, in building of, of some world-class labs. And in 2021, you know, we've got more degrees coming online and we're gonna be moving into our new home at the eTech building, which is located, uh, pictures located behind me. Um, you, you can't go very far without hearing about the college, um, whether it's hearing from uh, our, our, our subject matter experts, our faculty, um, on a, a number of, of news programs, whether it's, uh, whether it's our, our students actively involved in, in deployments, um, our folks, our students, our faculty, um, our alumni are continuing to make a huge difference in today's world. And, you know, as, a, as an alumni of the school, I hope one of the things you realize is that that, that makes your degrees even more valuable. Uh, you know, we're, we're raising the bar on, on, on UAlbany and, and UAlbany's influence in the community. And I think that's really, really important. Um, I would be completely remiss if I, if I didn't acknowledge the fact that I, I, I am the dean of an incredible world-class faculty and staff and students. Um, I, I could have the best faculty and the best staff in the world, and I do. But if I didn't have amazing students that were that were that were driven and committed and hardworking, the college wouldn't work. And and we're so fortunate to to have um, all of those elements coming together. I said to you in 2017 that I was one of my one of my big priorities was creating a culture of success. Um, we are we are well on our way of doing that. Our our traditions, even though we haven't been around all of that long. Uh, all, all, all for, for that long a period of time have really caught on. So whether it's our Dean's List Breakfast, which is quite simply one of the best events that, that I think in, in the entire year, where our faculty and, and staff um, serve breakfast to the Dean's List students. Remember, Dean's List is the is uh, students that get 3.5 uh, or, or above, so really high GPAs. Um, What's really interesting is that there's competitions among the students to make sure that they're there. And, and, and that's just a great feeling. Whether it's our game nights, whether it's our, our challenge coins, whether it's our recognition of our class pin. And if you look to the left, you can see the 2024, I, I know it's hard to believe, isn't it? 2024, a class of 2024 coming in. That is their, their new pin. And we're turning out larger and larger graduation classes. So what's a growth college look like? This is what a growth college looks like. Um, you know, you say, well, Bob, wait a sec, you, you told me that 2015 is when the governor announced that, that you're going to have the new school. Yeah, but if you think about it, we have the ISI, we have informatics and the information sciences um, and, the, and the library science programs part of the school, and they did predate us. And, and that's sort of reflected in the numbers from 2010 to 2015. You start to see, though, that this, this climb um, and a couple of uh, areas that I, I continue to, to, um, to point to. Um, watch our, 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 our graduate students and master's numbers, watch our doctoral numbers, and watch our graduate certificate numbers, because they are going to continue to climb. How are we doing this? It's a really interesting mix. While a lot of other schools are, are really dependent upon uh, the, the sort of traditional freshmen, we've, we have been very, very active in, um, in, in trying to balance both traditional um, tr traditional students and transfers. We've made a, a number of agreements with, with SUNYs like SUNY Canton, um, Dutchess Community, Coble Skill, um, I, and, and a couple of the private institutions that actually create pipelines into the program. So we, we see as much growth in, almost as much growth in the transfers as we do um, in, in, in our first years. And if you see where CHC is versus the rest of the university, you can, you can see the, the difference. One of the things that um, I'll be happy to talk about a little bit later is you know, our, our move towards making sure that, that it, it's not only multiple modalities, so I'm talking about in-person, hybrid, or online, both sync and async, but really trying to create a culture that can address the needs of a traditional student coming in from, from high school or community college, but also adult learners. And, and that's an area that, that I'm, I'm really interested in, in, in spending some more time on. Believe it or not, we are the third largest college on campus. So you get the College of Arts and Sciences, which is the, the huge behemoth. And then we're about 200 students behind the School of Business. And, and I think the way things are going, we're going to continue to, we're, we're going to continue to grow. And I think we're going to be the second largest college on campus in the not too distant future, which is absolutely amazing if you think about how, how young we are. Um, 
I want to call uh, attention to um, the, the sizes of our majors. You, you start to see how, how our, our majors are, are growing in size. Um, the, the one that, that, I am, um, that I feel the best about, believe it or not, is the informatics degree. And, and our informatics program really gets students into sort of applied technologies. Um, it, it's, the, it's the intersection of people, data, and technology. It's applied data. All of the, you, know, you keep hearing me say applied. It's how do we operationalize uh, the, the theories of social media, the theories of, of data, the theories of technology, and bring it to the field. Um, it is now the 11th largest major on campus, but it's the fastest growing major on, on, uh, at UAlbany and in, in SUNY. This, in, in my estimation, should be the single largest program on campus. Um, there are lots of jobs in cybersecurity. There's lots of jobs in, in, in planning emergency preparedness. Um, but the, the, the area of technology that, that, uh, that we address in our informatics program um, should be the, the, the single largest program on campus because that's where the jobs are going to be. I make no bones about it, as I said to you in 2017. Um, I, I don't mind being accused of, of being overly vocational. My, my job is to make sure that, that we have an academically sound, excellent faculty with the idea that, you know, for students that are coming to us, we're, we're helping to get jobs in the future. Uh, and, and that's, a, I think, a, a really important part of, of how we operate as an entity. So when I talked to you a, a few years ago, um, we had our first wave of degrees. So we had our, 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 our EHC majors and minors, a graduate certificate, our informatics programs. Since then, let me show you what we have brought on or in the process of bringing on. So we have brought on a, a new uh, inform, a master's in, of science in information sciences and intelligence analysis designed to get our students into the in, intel fields. We have a new uh, master's program in data analytics. We're bringing on uh, a, a new, two new master's programs in cyber security and, and looking at the areas of, um, of risk policy compliance and then also health security and privacy. Um, you're going to hear this phrase for me again. Uh, what, what I'm looking to do is create tailorable graduate programs. So there's a core curriculum for our cyber degree programs, and then you can have tailorable concentrations, which I think makes our degrees even more valuable. So this is the first tranche of, of our cybersecurity degrees. And as the field changes, we're going to be able to come in and, and bring in new concentrations, which is going to keep our, our programs fresh. We've been, we were lucky enough or, or to be asked to host the, the new Albany's esports teams, which I will note already has won national championships. It's an amazing program. Um, and, and while that is more, um, more both a club and a, and a sport, we're also bringing on a gaming and simulation concentration and moving towards a gaming and simulation program. When, when I'm talking gaming and simulation, you know, if you think about the economy in, in our region, there is actually the, a, a, beautiful, a, a beautiful hub of, of gaming and simulation companies that are growing in the, in, in the capital region. And we definitely want to be part of that. I also see the opportunity to link our, our professional training with gaming and simulation. And, and I think this idea of serious gaming as a training mechanism, as a teaching mechanism, is something that's going to take off in the future. We're bringing on new PhD specializations in, in areas like information for risk, uh, emergency management, and security. Um, we're also bringing in micro credentials, and you know I've talked a little bit to, to many of you about my view on micro credentials. I love micro credentials. I think micro credentials are a way to get people back in the classroom. I, I only half just say that it's the gateway drug to get people back into the classroom. Um, so, so the idea of, of being able to do a, a short burst that, that gives you, a, you know, gets you back in the classroom, gets your, your, your mind thinking about it, gets you active in academia again, I think is really important. And, and honestly, in, as, as our, our alum, I want, you to, I want to point out to you, micro-credentials keep you fresh in, in your own professions. Um, and it's a great way to think about your own career development. We're in the process of bringing on a, a, another BS in cybersecurity. 
this is going to be much more technical, and that's going to pair well with our with our, our cybersecurity degree um, in the emergency preparedness, homeland security side, which is much more, more much more policy uh, um, uh, and, and, and regulatory um, uh, uh, focused. So we're going to have the, the real technical for the real technical folks. We're going to have the policy folks that will be able to explain to policymakers the secondary and tertiary effects of, of, a, of a cybersecurity incident. Um, so we're really trying to make sure that we cover the gamut. And when you think about the digital forensics program that's over in the School of Business, you start to think about the, the, um, the algorithm programs that are there in the math department over in the School of um, uh, Arts and Sciences. What's really neat is that you Albany is starting to develop a full spectrum of approaches in, in the areas of cybersecurity. And then we're also in the process uh, in, in, in deep in the process of bringing on our emergency management and homeland security master's degrees. Like the, uh, the cybersecurity, we are going to have concentrations in them because that's, that is the way that, that we're gonna move, move forward. So you can see in a very short period of time, we've been really busy about bringing new, new programs on and in part, what that's going to do for us is continue that level of growth that you saw in the earlier slides. So we, we have the expression, um, we're, we're proud to be CHC weird. Um, it, it is a, it's a very different college. It's a very different college on campus, a very different college on, uh, in, in SUNY, um, but we're doing some things right. Uh, you know, we were recognized by the Chronicle of, of Higher Education as a, um, as a model of how to recession-proof a, a college. Um, we're, we're starting to gain national recognition in our rankings, uh, our, our return on investment ranking for our um, informatics program uh, was ranked in the, in the top 10 in the country. Our Homeland Security program was, uh, was ranked, in, I, we're actually number two. I was a little bit upset because Canton beat us. I, I love Canton and, and, and it's, a, it, it's, it's a fun thing. It's not anything that, it's a, I'm not upset at Canton, but I, I do want to be number one. Um, and it's not that I'm competitive, I just don't like to lose. Um, and, and we're seeing some of the strongest yield rates at, at UAlbany for admitted students, which means that, that we're really helping to bring the students in that, that will continue to, to strengthen and, and grow, the, grow the university. I said earlier, and I'll say it again, scores of media appearance. And we're, we're also really deep into the SUNY online uh, program because we want to be not just a UAlbany college, we want to be a SUNY college. And we are really becoming an interdisciplinary hub and, and we're working with every college on campus, which is exactly what the, the, what the vision of the school was. It's exactly what the governor was looking for when he talked about it in, this, in his state of the state address. A couple of areas that, that I, am, I am absolutely committed to, um, and that's dealing with the issue of diversity and inclusion. And I need to put this, put this out as, as a marker. One of the reasons I came to UAlbany one of the reasons that um, I, I, I saw such a future here is because of the diversity of our student body. I spent a decade in, in Homeland Security in the federal government. I spent two decades in, in the response uh, community. And not that it's bad people, but you, know, you, you sit, I was in DHS or you know, even with working with my partners over justice or, or um, state or, or defense, they all look like me. You know, they're all getting old. They're all losing their hair. Um, besides the folks over at DOD, they're all wearing goatees. Um, and, and when I think about the issue of diversity and inclusion, it, it's not just a moral imperative, although it is a moral imperative in my mind. It, it, it's a national security um, necessity. We need to bring more diversity into the fields of like intelligence analysis and, and um, in, 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 in our enforcement programs. We need to get, we need to, to we, we need to have um, our, our government reflect both how our, our population looks and acts and thinks. And if we don't, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create the type of blind spots that we've seen after 9-11 in, in, in other events. And one of the things that I'm most proud of is, is how diverse our students are. So we've taken the, the issue of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, we call it the JEDI uh, task force, and, and really looking at all elements of, of how we operate. So thinking about teaching and learning, thinking about structures and policies, college climate, recruitment and retention of, of not only students, but also faculty and staff, and, and what are our responsibilities are to our communities and professions. And, and, and understand is that uh, we, we really wanna make sure that, um, that 
that our students have uh, have access to, to to the very best and most balanced programs and approach that we we possibly can. I talked to you a little bit about the ethnicity and breakdown of our of our college um, on our undergraduate side. Uh, Fifty three percent is 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 white, which uh, white or non Hispanic. Um, that's up about 2%. We've been sort of running about 50-50, which is something that, that, that I'm really, really proud of. Um, I think the numbers are a little bit skewed right now because we're sort of in, in, in between this. Uh, well, we're, we're, we're still at the tail end of COVID, um, but, but you know, I think that has affected um, bo both our, our recruitment, obviously, and our student numbers. Our graduate programs um, are continuing to grow, but this is an area that I'm really looking to, to bring more diversity to the field. Uh, and when I talk diversity, I wanna make sure I'm clear. It, 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 I'm not talking only um, uh, race or ethnicity. I'm really talking also gender as well. So the idea of bringing more women into leadership positions, bringing more women in, in, into the fields that have been traditionally male dominated. And again, it, it's, it, it's, it's bringing the, bringing a, a whole palette to, to fields that need new thinking or creative thinking. Um, I talked to you a little bit about gender breakdown. It, it, there's a, a couple areas that um, are of concern to me, and, and that's where um, our, the, the number of, of women that are in our EHC undergrad and our INF undergrad programs. These are, again, these are areas that, that I really wanna bring more women to the field. High paying jobs, great careers, um, and, and frankly, in desperate need of, of the type of um, um, the, 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 the type of diversity that I spoke of. Our graduate program is, is skewed the other way, and, and this is pretty interesting. It, 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 it's in part due to the um, uh, that I don't see enough male diversity in our in our graduate program, and I'm, I'm really looking to, to, to grow that. Um, so, so that these are areas that. When you ask me back in a couple of years, you know, I'll, I'll update these slides and hopefully we'll be able to show you success. A couple of things about our students that I think are really important. Um, the number of Pell students that are coming here, and for those of you that aren't aware of what Pell is, Pell is a federal grant program that goes to those students that are um, most in need of fiscal help. And, 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 and the financial help that Pell gives them um, gives them a leg up in getting through the university, and getting through the university is is um, is a proven way of of really dealing with your with your own social mobility. Um, for our spring 2020, 2020 numbers, um, fifty six percent of our INF students are, are non Pell, and sixty eight percent of our EHC are are non Pell. Um, these numbers have been charting up. I, I watched them pretty carefully, though. Um, you know the downside of of becoming a destination college is that I, I want to make sure that that we are affordable, accessible, and diverse, and and so watching to make sure that that we're not putting anything in the way of prospective students uh, to, to come here. I I am you know I talked to you about my commitment to diversity. I talked to you about my commitment to growing the school. Um, I also am, am committed to, uh, to an, an open and affordable public education. I think it is a cornerstone of our, of our democracy. And if there's ever a time in, in our lives where, where we need more educated thinking people, it's now. Um, our, our students are, are doing remarkably well. Um, you know, we, we, we've got some that, that, that aren't, but it's a relatively, relatively small number. And, and we've got some real rock stars in the, in the 3.0 to, to 3.45, 3.49, that sort of B range, and then a, a good percentage in the, in the B plus A, A range. And so I show this to you because we're, you know, when, when, when I'm going to talk to you in a little bit about what I need from you or what I'm going to ask from you, um, we've got some really great students. Uh, we got some. We have um, some amazing students, um, and and um, I, I want you to be the. I want you to know them. I want you to meet them, and and I want you to potentially um, hire them. Um, some of the highlights of our student work. Uh, we we really we really push um, student faculty research, and unlike a lot of other programs in schools. We make sure that it's both undergraduate and graduate. I think this is something that sets us apart from a lot of other programs, and it's showing. We're we're, we're seeing multiple um, winners of the President uh, uh, Research uh, Award winners, student organizations.
organizations that that we um, that we work with, including the students stopping the trafficking of, of people, S Stop, Men Combating Sexual Violence, and Epsilon Delta um, Psi, which is our pre-professional organization, have all been recognized this year as uh, as really out, outstanding on campus. I raise these issues because I do view our, our clubs and student organizations as a critical part of our student development. And, and we need mentors. Uh, we, we need a, alumni involvement. Just because you are, you've graduated, that doesn't mean that, that you can't give back. And if you don't wanna give back to the school, if you could think about giving some of your time and expertise to these student groups, that would be, that would be terrific. Because what I see there is that that's, that's where we're actually able to, to refine and define those leadership school skills and, the, and those professional skills that augment and support the theoretical and the applied work that, that we, we have in the program. Um, our, one of our, our students is the graduate student SUNY um, uh, Student Association president. And I talked to you a bit about some, some amazing research please take a look at, at what we have online. Uh, the showcase of our student research is, is really fascinating. And, and the quality of the program, uh, the quality of the research is wonderful in both the showcase, which is, which is more undergraduate, and then TIR, which is, a, which is an annual conference that our PhD students um, put on, uh, which, was, which was just held um, a couple of weeks ago, had just absolutely fascinating cutting edge research that's being done uh, by, our, by our doctoral students. And, and it's something that I wanna make sure that you're invited to and you have an opportunity to, to attend and, and sort of poke around. And again, anything I can do to keep you um, academically involved, keep you intellectually curious, continues to link you back to the program, links you back to the college and frankly makes your degree more valuable. Um, our research, funded research has been, um, oh, before I go on to funded research, you know, one of the things I said to you in 2017 is that I was, uh, that I was committed to teaching, you know, committed to being student centric, and that's reflected in, in how we teach and who teaches. All of our faculty, whether you're a full, whether you're an associate, whether you're a lecturer, whether you're an assistant, teach both undergraduate and graduates. And in fact, both I and the, and the vice dean, we actually teach freshmen. Um, so, so everyone in our college, and from, from including our staff and faculty, are teaching, are in the classroom, they're interacting with students. There isn't any of this ivory, ivory tower, moat around the dean's office crap that you see in, in uh, other schools, not, on, not, in, not at UAlbany, but in, in other schools. Um, and I think that's really important. Um, it, I think it's a great thing that that our students actually know who their dean is, know who their vice dean is, and and um, um, I, I can't wait to get them back on campus because while it's great to talk to you on Zoom, it's kind of lonely. Um, so it'd be great to have students back. Back to our research, our faculty has been cranking. Um, you know, in in, in the, the last year and a half, they have been turning out a huge number of of funded grant awards. Um, you know that they've uh, they've applied for over 14 million dollars. Uh, you know of which we've got 1.4 already, and then we've got 11.8 that's still under review. We've got a we've got funding uh, and and relationships now built with some of the deep pocket uh, organizations like National Science Foundation, Department of Defense, the National Endowment of the Humanities, and of course my my old stomping ground over at, at Department of Homeland Security. And we have some really interesting things that are going on with atmospherics and, and NOAA. And, and there's just, uh, you know, they're, we're, they're coming with us to, to ETEC and, and that's gonna be a great partnership. Um, for those of you that may know about the federal government, we've been able to put into place an, 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 uh, what's called an IDIQ agreement. You're know, like, okay, I have no idea what that is. It's an indefinite um, time and indefinite quality um, uh, agreement. So basically what it does is that it gives us a, an IDIQ uh, contract puts a pipeline in place for the federal government to actually easily move money to us. And, and that's going to make all of the difference as we, as we continue to look for funded research. Um, I talked a little bit about COVID and you probably saw a lot of what we were doing. In fact, I know a, a number of you participated with us. Um, a, a number of you were, were on our town halls. We, we had a series of town halls that we did in conjunction with our school of public health. 
Um, they were fascinating. We, we brought in speakers from um, Wuhan. We brought in speakers, you know, the, 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 the Tony Fauci equivalent of, of Sweden, who, if you, if you know anything about what's going on in Sweden, they took a very different approach. Some of it was great. Some of it didn't work, work as well. Um, but we, we were able to bring a, a, a number of different perspectives and, and use, the, use COVID as a, as a learning opportunity um, for our students, but also as a way of keeping our community together. Um, we were able to do to, to shift to, to online uh, and even things like our makerspace where we did makerspace Mondays that was virtual. Uh, we had game nights to, in, in order to keep our, our faculty and students involved and as alum would love for you to participate with us on, on our game nights. Um, if it's there's not too many schools that you can go and, 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 and legally push your, your, your faculty member off the top of a roof, you can do that virtually at game night uh, and it happens quite often. Um, I, I occasionally show up. I stink um, at these games, so I just cannot keep up with uh, with how good the students are. And I'm super proud of what our our vice dean did in in organizing um, the, the efforts for, for our our three D printing efforts, where we have printed over 7,500 face shields um, at, for. The, the medical community and and the, in the in the campus. So when we couldn't get personal protective equipment, um, the, the the vice dean and some of our faculty members um, came together with the maker maker community and and, and a lot of you, um, and really organically grew this capacity, which I I think is just um, I, I just think it's fascinating and I think it bodes well about how communities can can re can create resilience in, in the face of disasters in the future. Um, you know, we're moving into this beautiful building. If you haven't been on campus, um, please, 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 you know, take take a drive by that the huge building that that's by the the sculpture garden, the board's um, um, uh, the board's facility. Um, it, so it's we're on the Harriman campus, which does a couple of things. It, this is the first time the university has been able to, to, to build on state land in the Harriman campus. I think it bodes really well for potential expansion in the future. This facility is incredible. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to put it right there on the table. It is an absolute world class facility. We're bringing on uh, 19 different new labs, um, dealing with everything from um, social media to, to emergency messaging. We have um, uh, data analytics labs. We have our Internet of Things, our cyber, our cyber range, our makerspace. We also have labs that are dedicated to um, emergency operations, another lab that's dedicated to uh, in, in, um, data analysis and information uh, intelligence analysis. Again, one of the things that I'm looking to do is, is to, to make sure that our students are coming out having touched the, the, the technologies that they will be dealing with in the field. Equally important to me though, and, and where we're getting a lot of attention from a lot of our federal partners, we're, we have something that, that nobody else has, and that's the ability to start to really think about how we use these different streams of data, how we think about using information, how we think about operationalizing it for a decision maker. And, and I, I see just some huge growth there. The fact that we're co-located with uh, our atmospherics, uh, we're, we're co-located with our environmental engineering program. It's a commitment to, to thinking and dealing with climate change. It's, th it's, it's thinking about uh, how, how we deal with the entrepreneurial community because we're going to be co-located um, with, with, uh, with, with, with startup um, um, and, and incubators. Um, and, and this is where academia needs to go, that, that public-private that, that multiple government relationships, um, the hands-on, th this is a facility that we're gonna su be super proud of and, and we want you to come back and, and enjoy it with us and with our students. You know, I, I would be um, absolutely remiss if, uh, if, I didn't ask, um, if I didn't ask you for help. Uh, I'm just gonna, uh, you know, I, I talked to you about the importance of faculty. I talked to you about the importance of staff. I talked to you about the importance of students. Guess what? I need you. I do. Um, strong alumni make a strong program. A strong program makes your degrees better. So you say, okay, well, what, what, what can I do? Um, give us some time. It's probably the most precious resource that you have. But if you could work with us, if you could offer some of your time, 
if you could, if you could um, volunteer to, to maybe guest lecture, if you could bring your professional expertise to our students, to our faculty, if there are areas that, that you're working on in, in your own professions that you think may, may, um, may pair well with us, let's talk about the idea of what kind of sort of joint research that we could do. You're also our ambassadors. I need you to talk up the school. I need you to talk up U Albany. Um, you know, that amazing growth that was seen has pretty much been word of mouth. And it's in, in large part due to, to both you and to our students. Please keep it up. If you see great students who, are, who, are, who may not have thought about U Albany, um, do me a favor, just ask them to take a look at us. Because what I find is that if we have an opportunity to talk to students and their parents, we can get a lot of them. Um, the idea of mentorship is, is critical to us. Experiential learning is, is a huge component of how we teach. So the idea of being able to come in and, and be mentors to students, particularly we, we have so many first gen students, um, wonderful, committed, hardworking students. Um, and, and they could they could absolutely benefit from from your knowledge, your experiences, um, helping them understand what happens when you go into the professional field as you move up the ranks and as each of you start to achieve to achieve um, in in your own fields and in your own businesses. Those are all lessons that that I want you to bring back and, and work with our students on. And of course, you know. And nothing says you know you love us quite like donations, um, and and understand that. Well, uh, I would never say no to money, um, and in fact, if any of you win the lottery and would like to rename the school after yourself, just give me a call. Um, I I can give you a number, and would love to call it you know the Fred you know, the, the the Fred School of of Disaster Sciences, but it's not just money. Um, we've had some amazing donations from some of our alum for things like. Um, um, the, the the drone lab, you know, and, and it's not a huge amount, but you know, it's a, it's a dozen drones here, it's a couple of drones there. Um, with our makerspace, if you if you have three D printers that that you're not using, if you have equipment that that you you, you think would be kind of neat to play with, all of those donations just make us a better, stronger college. Um, and my question to you is that you know, you know, will you continue to make a difference? And and again, I I think you are the you're the fourth leg on a five-legged stool. I talked about faculty and staff. I talked about students. I talked about uh, alumni, and I talk about parents because the, the family support and, and the friend support network is absolutely critical to our students' success. So, in a nutshell, um, it, 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 I, I'd like to open it up to, to questions and answers, and, and I, I'm happy to, to answer just about um, most questions, uh, unless it's unethical, immoral, or gets me into it, areas of classification. Um, but you no, know, bring it on. And, and again, thank you for being here, and, and thank you for being so committed to the university. It's, it, it is deeply appreciated. Thank you so much, Dean Griffin. I really appreciate um, all the wonderful information you've shared today. And honestly, you've, you've answered most of my questions. I jotted down a bunch and you kept answering them. I do have one question. Um, we, I have a current high school student. Um, what kind of student would make a good student at UAlbany in your program? What, is it somebody who's really good in math? Is it somebody who's a leader? Um, you know, you know, I think that the single, the, the single biggest element um, or most important element is a, um, a commitment to working hard, um, a commitment to being flexible. Uh, you know, we, we, we can take, you know, we can take all of those skill sets that you just talked about and a thousand more and apply them to different areas of the college. What, what we're re really looking for, though, is that, uh, that, that students that aren't afraid to get their hands dirty, um, you know, I talked about experiential learning that are that are willing to 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 learn and, and equally important, willing to be taught. And, that, and that's really important because if a, a student comes in and, and you know, they, they want sort of a more traditional program, we have some great traditional programs on campus. This is a little bit a little bit less traditional in the sense that um, that we do have requirements for experiential learning that, that go along with our academics. The, the other thing that I'm going to say is and, and I am a a. a firm believer um, in the redemptive quality of folks, okay? And um, 
I, I'm not afraid to take I'm, I'm not afraid to take students that that may have not been all A's in high school. In fact, I find that that many of them turn out to be the absolute best students. Um, so if you know students that 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 are a little worried about it but are willing to work hard, send them our way. We'll we'll turn them into a, in, into a, a amazing graduates, and they'll be incredible alums, and and they'll be the type of people that you're going to want to hire for your own businesses. Thank you. A um, couple questions are coming in. What is what differentiates CEHS from similar colleges schools? Um, so, uh, well, first it's CHC. So um, um, it's you know what what makes us different is a, is a, is a couple things. One is that as far as the the stand up of the program, there are other schools that have um, homeland security programs. There are other schools that have amazing cybersecurity programs. There are other schools that have emergency management programs. What we did is we brought them all together. So we think about this as in, a, in its totality. Well, and, and that is a very, very different approach. When we brought the ISI, when we brought the information sciences over, we brought the data sciences to, to the table, that added a, a whole new area that, that we're able to go into. Um, so, so what makes us different is, is how we approach the fields that we're in. We're, we're really, uh, you know, we're, we're not above doing basic research. Basic research is, is really important. Our sweet spot though, is more in the applied and operational um, research. Our, you know, our, uh, the motto is differentiate, you make a difference. So the idea is how do, how do we take the work that we do in the classroom, in our labs and change our communities, make our communities safer, make our communities more efficient. Um, and and, it, and, and, it, and it's that commitment back to the operations, that the commitment back to taking learning and, and, and bringing it to the field, bringing it to the communities, which I think really sets us apart. That in, we have knocked out just an absolutely uh, amazing faculty. Um, it, it's, an, it's an embarrassment of riches right now. It, this is, um, I'm going to brag on the school anyway because I'm a dean, but I got to tell you, we we have I think the single best faculty um, in in these areas in in in, uh, in the country, especially when you when we're looking at our um, our emergency management in, in homeland and in, in our our cyber in our in our technical our technical folks our, our informatics folks. It, this is this is a crackerjack group of uh, of faculty. We're we're super we're we're super lucky. Here's another thing I didn't ask for from, from you all and the alums. I'm always looking for, for adjuncts. I, I love the idea of bringing working professionals into the classroom. I think when, when you look at our tenure track and our, and our research active faculty and, and you pair that with the operational knowledge that, that you bring to the classroom, that, that just makes us so much stronger. And, and frankly, it, it really rounds out a student's education and, and, and ability to succeed after after school. That and the fact that, like I said, I'm unapologetic about the fact that that I'm looking at students and, and asking, okay, what are you going to do next? Are you going to go into graduate school? Are you going to are you going to go to work? And, and I say this tongue in cheek, but as a father of two, I, I believe it myself that um, I you know living the rest of your life and your parents um, basement is not a life plan. It may be a temporary <laughs> step, but I want to make sure that you have other things that you can do so that you that that you have a really bright future. Another question. Practically speaking, what are some ways that alumni who are in the cyber field can give back? I'm lucky enough to have been given a lot of exposure to technology and security very quickly and would love to cycle that back. Are you looking for alumni help in that cyber range? Yeah, absolutely. So we are in in the in the process of standing up a a, a cyber range. Right now, we're looking at a non classified cyber range. So really trying to keep it in the in the open source. Long term, what I'm hoping to be able to do is actually to connect to some of the classified cyber ranges that are, that are being run out of the DoD and, and DHS and some others. So the idea of 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 our alumni who are involved in cybersecurity or involved in IT would love to plug you into not only our cyber range, um, we, we do an awful lot of things. We, we do things like uh, women in computing. Um, we, 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 we have programs that are designed to support um, women in STEM. We have programs that, that we run that, that 
actually push all the way into elementary school and middle school. If you're committed to, if you're committed to improving the diversity and, and inclusiveness of our STEM fields and STEAM fields, we, we, we would love to have you. We have clubs that would, would, that would desperately love to have uh, um, uh, alumni mentorship. And even if you don't want to be able to go to every meeting, the idea of being able to speak with them, we bring in guest speakers to our classes all the time. So, so these are these are all different elements. Um, but, but if if you're willing to willing to work, I, I know we have ways to to, to make your, your time vi a valuable contribution to our students. Okay. You know, um, if I, if I could once again, you yeah, know, yeah. one of the things that I'm going to say to everybody who's on this call, you know, way more than you think you do. All right, you are an expert. And you may not even think you are, but once once you start realizing how how much you have learned, not only from the university but from from life itself and from your professions, that is absolutely invaluable. And you know, for those of you that have kids, you know, you know, mom and dad can say it a thousand times. Yeah, faculty <laughs> member can say it a hundred times. Yeah, all of a sudden you bring an expert in from the field, and it really resonates. So, so sometimes the, the, the messages need to come from other sources and, and that's, that's absolutely a role we'd love for you to play. Okay, we'll do one more. Great to hear about all the new degree programs. Is there any intent to allow certificate micro-credentials on components of any of the programs for those of us that have already have our graduate degree? Yes, uh, uh, yes, ab absolutely. Um, we're, we're looking not only not only a certificate in, in micro credentials. We're looking at summer camps, and I, I know that sounds funny to everybody. You think, oh, my no, your kids? No, no. I'm also looking at at, at oh. summer camps for adults. Fun. So as we start as we start to think about things like the makerspace, as we start to think about our esports, when we start to think about moving into gaming and simulation, when we start to think about decision making, um, I, I think you know I, I bragged on eTech. I, I think the the what what drives me crazy is is when it's quiet during the summertime. This campus should be buzzing 12 months a year. These buildings should be filled. We should be we 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 want you we want you to come back and and um, I, I I take a lot of lessons believe it or not from the Culinary Institute of America and, and I watch how how they deal with adult learners. I watch how they deal with hands on learning. I watch how, how, how they set up their classrooms. And when you come to eTech, you're gonna see a lot of our, our classrooms and lab spaces are set up the same way. We have windows into our, into our laboratories. I want you to be able to come and, and, and get, your, you know, get your hand dirty, but also see what's going on. I don't want labs that are, are behind, um, behind walls and, and moats. It, it needs to be open, it needs to be accessible. And listen, I don't know what I wanna do when I grow up, so if you do, you're, you're way ahead of me, but I know I can't stop learning. And, and, and if I do, then, then I get, actually I get really crappy and angry and, and it, it, I'm not a nice person. So keeping intellectually, um, you know, keeping intellectually um, active is critically important. And we will, we will be offering different programs for folks. All right, uh, we have an invitation, Jonathan Crispino. Anyone on this call who wants to be a guest speaker in my INF 301 class this fall is welcome to come talk during my career night. <laughs> Thank you very much. You see, and, and, and this, is a pro this is a perfect example of, of uh, you know, the amazing faculty and adjuncts that we have. Um, and, and, and please, you know, again, I, I made I, I made the joke about you know the fifty million dollar naming fee. I, I, nobody's got. I, well, I, I don't have it, and, and you know if you do, God bless you. Um, I don't need fifty million. I just need fifty minutes. So please, anything that you can give uh, is is deeply deeply appreciated. Thank you so much. I do want to ask if once the building's open, we'd love to do and we can do things in person. I think it'd be a great alumni event to uh, maybe have a tour or if you're open to that. We will be proud to do that. Um, it, it, this is a, a building that as as Great Danes, you you will be, well, your first reaction is going to be, damn it, <laughs> why the hell was this here when I was here, <laughs> which, is, which is a great thing. But um, we, we absolutely are committed committed to to, uh, to 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 tours and um, frankly come and hang out with us. I mean, we we really designed space that was that was meant for interaction, um, and 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 that includes you. So thank you. 
Thank you so much for out of time. I really appreciate you spending the an hour with us today. Um, and this will live on YouTube. We'll be able we'll share with everybody in case you want to share it. And it looks like we have um, some marching orders to get some new students and donations. <laughs> thank you so, so much. Appreciate it. And thank you for your time. Everybody be well and can't wait to see y'all on campus. Thank you. On behalf of the Alumni Association, thank you all for joining us. Bye-bye.